Representative Seltzer, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me, Sarah. Tell us about yourself, your occupation, and your home life. Well, I am a Minnesota native. I grew up in, the, in, in Minnesota in a small town called Winston, Minnesota, and I um, I'm a teacher by uh, profession, and I've taught in both the regular classroom and I've taught children with special needs. But since I grew up in business, I also was always very interested in business and moved back into the private sector, and I culminated my career there as the executive national sales manager for a computer services firm. I live with my husband in um, Minnetonka, um, and we have two wonderful children, Danielle, who is 25 now and is teaching in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam and my son Jared is 18 and just went off to college. And where is he going to college? He's at Loyola Marymount in California. Jared's interested in film. He's interested in video um, production. He's interested in cinematography and in directing. Tell me a little bit about your district. What issues do you think people in your district are concerned about? I have a wonderful district. It's the southern half of Minnetonka. And we go up to Minnetonka Boulevard and then um, in, in the northern half of Eden Prairie. We go down to Highway 5 in Eden Prairie. And you know, the issues that um, are really important uh, to the, my members of my district, the issues that I heard about as I door knocked thousands of doors this past campaign season is they're, in, they're, they're um, worried about uh, jobs in the economy, which I think is uh, pretty um, normal at this uh, point in time in our history. They want to make sure that our kids continue to receive a great education. And they also, quite frankly, just want to make sure that they have a legislature that works, a government that works, where people work together and get things done. Who was the first person you told when you decided to run for a House seat? And what prompted you to run? Yes, well, I retired from the Hopkins School Board. I served for two terms on the Hopkins School Board, two of those years as treasurer and my last three years as board chair. And I retired at the end of December uh, and thought that I would um, you know, pursue some volunteer opportunities, work directly with children. And a number of people came and asked me to run for the state legislature. And I thought about it, and I love our community. And I love our state. And Minnesota always has been the state that works. And I just, as I looked at it, I saw some challenges that we face in the future and thought that my background would be useful in meeting those challenges. So I thought about it a great deal. And then I thought I would do it. And of course, I went and told my husband, Chuck, first. What do you think your greatest qualification for being a lawmaker is? Well, you know, I have, a, I have a unique background in that I grew up um, working in my family small business. My family owned the Winstead Telephone Company out in Winstead, Minnesota, so I had that small business background and um, spent many an evening talking with my father around the kitchen table about um, business. And uh, I've worked in the public sector as a public school teacher because education is also another passion of mine. I've been in um, administration, uh, the managerial end of it, uh, on the school board. So I understand how, how a large public organization runs and had to make uh, budget decisions and policy decisions at, uh, at the school district level. And um, though the Minnesota State Legislature is much larger, um, obviously, than a local school district, I was on the Hopkins School Board for eight years. Some of the challenges we faced successfully, I think, really did prepare me for the state legislature. When I was first on our school board, we were in debt. There was a large deficit, and so we had to use all the tools in our toolbox. We had to do things differently. We had to look for efficiencies. We had to cut our budget, and we went to our voters and talked to them, and they granted us additional revenues. And so we brought our school district out of debt into uh, the uh, place where we won awards for fiscal excellence under both Governor Pawlenty's and Governor Dayton's administration. And while we did that, we also increased academic opportunities for our kids, we increased rigor, and we increased research-based support systems for our students. So we did more with less, and, uh, uh, and we're, we're actually in a better place than we were before. And our state faces a huge deficit right now, and it's not rocket science. You have to make some real decisions and choices, and sometimes they're not easy. But um, if you make wise decisions and in choices, and you make wise investments, you come out with a better outcome. And so I think that my experiences on the school board in bringing people together to come up with real solutions that work will help me contribute uh, at the state level in the state legislature. If you could offer up the first bill of the legislative session, 
what would that bill be? That is a tough question because I have a number of issues. But I think one of uh, my background in education um, tells me that the achievement gap really will be a challenge to future generations in our state if we don't take care of that now. We have a growing uh, population, uh, which is fabulous in our state, um, but some, some of these people are, some of these kids aren't achieving to the level they should be. And I think early childhood education is huge in that area. So I would offer up a bill that would expand uh, research-based opportunities for, for families in the early childhood education areas with some accountability uh, measures attached because obviously the ultimate goal is that all children are reading on grade level by the end of third grade because then they're going to do great in the future. That's what the research shows. So there'd be a lot. I'd be offering up bills. Hope I will be offering bills, you know, to spur economic development, help job creation, but we have to take care of our future first.